Hello, we're going to look at a test question that appeared on the midterm. And we're going to look at variations on that test question. And when I say variations, I just want you to remember that. We did discuss that there are a lot of wrong ways to do things, but there are, you know, there are a few ways to do it right. So when we look at things, we have to learn to judge. Um, how complex was our solution, how much, what it did cost us in time and space, which are beyond the scope of this course, space and time complexity of a problem, but writing a program is not. That is a difficulty. So what was our question? One of the exam questions, or a quiz question it could be in the future, is what is the, uh, I'll give you four integers, A, B, C, and D, write a function that returns the maximum of those four numbers. And the prototype is given. Once you know the prototype, you know exactly what the heading, the header should look like for each function. I'm going to, in this experiment, I'm going to use the built-in max and swap. I don't think we need algorithm for the swap function. We used it in class, um, but you might need it for max. So these are the prototypes. There are seven of them because I have seven different answers. And on a quiz, if you came up with a ninth or a twelfth or a fifteenth answer, I do try to evaluate and read all your code, even if it's obfuscated. So you notice the, um, the parameters are the same in all seven. I just changed the name here so that I can distinguish each one. My first solution. I simply use the built-in function called max. Somebody gives me A, I have no idea what A, B, and C are, but someone will call this function max zero with some numbers, A, B, and C, and D, and I will take A and put it here. Well, the compiler will. B will go there. C and D. This first function, max, will give me the answer of C and D. I don't know what it is, but it'll give me an answer. That answer will be fed into this function, which will then take that first answer here, I don't know what it is, C or D's value, and compare it to B. And then it will give me some answer. And last, A will be compared to that value in this version of max. So, and eventually, an answer comes out, max. Another solution is, I write my own max. I don't use the built-in one. So somebody gives me a variable. I call the first one A. I call the second one B. They come in. I ask if A is greater than B, then return A. If A is not greater than B, it's false. I come over here and instead return B. And you can see that at this point, my next version of max is down here using this as some sort of auxiliary. Again, I take C and D. And you could have put this in any order. It didn't have to be A. I could have put B here and C here and D here and B over here, whatever. Could have, any, any order. So I get the value from this. This number, whatever it is, gets compared to the value of B with max, this max version. This gives me an answer, and then that answer is then compared with this version, that value of A, and eventually I get one number back that I return. Now, as you look at these functions, you try to look at them and you think about, um, can I understand them? Is this easy for me to figure out? I look at the next one too, and I ask, is it easy for me to figure that out as well? How hard was it me to, for me to write this? Will it work? How long does it take to run? Here's my third solution. Again, you can see this prototype up here. It's exactly the same interface. I have four variables coming in. The first variable, I assume, is going to be the maximum value. And then I turn around and I check each other variable compared to the assumed one. If B is greater than, then A was wrong. It wasn't the max. I then take B, make it the max. 
Then I come here and I say, well, A or B might be the max. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, is C bigger than it? If C is bigger than it, then I was wrong. I then change it to that is max and become C. Whatever C is. Again, I don't know what numbers are in here. I just know there are four numbers and they have a name, A, B, C, and D. And last but not least, I then compare D to the max value. If D was larger, then I was wrong and I fix it. And when I'm done, I return the final value. So now I have a third solution. And once again, when you look at these solutions, you go back and you look at this and you ask which is easier to understand, which is easy to implement. And in terms of syntax errors, this looks like it's easier to get going right away. This one looks like more typos are possible. And logic errors because inside that typo, I mean, what if I accidentally um, put D in here twice and I didn't notice it? All right, here's another one. And a fourth solution, solution number four. Again, same interface. Now I get fancy and I say, whatever A is, put it inside. He, the, this is an array of four items, of four data items here. Whatever B is, put it in here. Whatever C is, plop it in there. And whatever D is, place it there. So I fill the array with the values of A, B, C, and D. Notice it's the values. Next, I built in the I used the built-in sort routine. That's in algorithms, and it sorts by default from low to high. I say start at the beginning, the first variable, whatever that is, and go all the way up zero, one, two, three, which is four items. It'll go up to D, and it'll put them in order from low to high. So that means the last one, item three, not D. Forget about D, it's not D. D was just used to get data in here. The last value, number three, will have the highest number, and then I'll return it. Next one, same concept. This is sort of something we covered in class. It's sort of a rudimentary bubble sort with no loops. I simply go through the list of a, B, and C, and D, and if, and if A, the first one, is less than B, then I don't want that or equal to it. I'll take B and put its value where A is. So that's why I say swap. And I do this looking at two at a time, that is we have A, B, C, and D, and I look at two and I say, if put the biggest one on top. Then I move down and I look at the next two right here and I say, put the biggest one on top. And I move down again here, put the biggest one on top. Now that doesn't guarantee that the largest one is, is on top. So what I have to do is I have to run this thing again, but I don't have to run it all the way because the bottom is, is already taken care of. If A was the smallest one, it would be swapped, swapped right away. But the top one might be only here. So I have to do this two more times, and then once more after that. And it guarantees, if I did it right, um, A will be the maximum value. Well, that's really rather complex. A lot of thinking and I could have made a mistake in my thoughts there so I can go back here and say well you know I like this one why because this is well written and understood and people are good at it the thing that makes it hard is I had to know C++ well enough and be creative enough to try this little experiment to see if I could do this and if it worked here well I just had to have this logic of um, assuming something, and then proceeding through some lines of code. All right, here's the bubble-ish sort again. This is the same sort. What I'm going to do, instead of saying three, two, 
And one, I'm going to be inefficient. I'm going to just repeat this thing two more times. So I'll do it all together. The first, this thing here, whole thing, three times. So if you look here, here it is. Instead of pruning it out, I just repeat this thing three, excuse me, one, two, three. As P pass one, pass two, pass three. This thing just goes around three times. And when it's done, A should be the largest value. And the smallest value will be in D. Here's another one, a little more brutish. It says, well, I get these numbers. This is the last one, A, B, C, and D. Excellent, there they are. I'm going to just guess that A is the max. But, you know, trust but test, right? I'm going to test it. So I say, okay, what if I was wrong? What if B was the max? If B was the max, then B will be bigger than A, B will be bigger than C, B will be bigger than D. Oops, okay, the max is B. Well, I'm going to check C. What's C? Is C bigger than A? And is C bigger than, notice this is an and, and, logical and. And is C at the same time greater than or equal to D? If so, then C is the max. And of course, I test for D. There's a lot of typing in here. There's a lot of chances that I might make a mistake in this typing. Um, but eventually, if D is the answer, then max will be D. And eventually, I return max. And out goes max. What would this look like altogether? Well, here's a test main, just like on the, there was a quiz. Um, I use these values. I need to change these values around to use, um, this is uh, max now. I should try it when Z is max, when X is max, when W is max, and try what well, the same number. So here I try the first solution, the second solution, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And if you look over here, I lined everything up, I think, kind of nicely. Um, there's um, the max is true. It's 50, 56. Each one of them concur. The max is 56. Well, what should you do? I highly recommend you continue creating your own variations on the solution. They don't have to be um, tricky, fancy. They can be bizarre looking. Think of it as you're an artist working on a painting, abstract art. So don't, do not be concerned with the code's quote unquote quality, only that the darn thing works. When I mean quality, I just mean aesthetic. Here, at this point, I mean it not, needs to work. So think that you're experimenting around with different um, structures. But of course, when you're done, make sure it works, that you're not dreaming that it works. I mean, on a mission to Mars, you don't want to dream your software works. You actually do want it to work. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it, um, it was uh, educational and um, expounded upon what we did in class.